Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make the Primaris Captain from the Indominus box set. Also, at the end of the video I'm going to make a quick note about the upcoming Necron parts of the box. Now showcasing every part of this little adventure, we're going to start by assembling the model, which is pretty straightforward, it's very simple. After removing each piece, we slice off the excess and then take a little sander and then sand them smooth. We assemble up to the point where it gets in the way of painting and also we have to trim a little bit of these like uh, poles that are on the model because they kind of get in the way and with super glue I use it to make a snug fit. I don't want to attach the backpack. Alright, with Liquitex flexible modeling paste we're going to use this and we're going to texture the armor. We're going to take a little thin brush and we're going to dab and all over the uh, ceramatite armor. This is going to create a little textured feel. We want to do a very fine refined one so you have to have the right brush for this. After it's dried, and a hair dryer will help with that, we then take our fingers and we rub it all over the armor that we applied texture to. This will help sand it down in case there are any large glumps of the putty. And now for priming, we're going to take some blue masking tape and we're going to double side it, or however you say it, so that it's sticky on top. And then we're going to place all our pieces on top so it doesn't fly away during the priming process. And my primer of choice is going to be Bright Touch Gray Car Primer. Once the front side is done, I then lay out another sheet of tape and then apply, uh, then apply the pieces on top that are still gray. The base is not going to be primed again because it only had one side. Looking good, the model is all primed pretty well, the texture is visible but not massive. And now with Iron Breaker, we're going to paint this all over the model. All the armor and the shield will be painted this. And now with a 1-ish to 1-ish mix of Abaddon Black and Nuln Oil, we will apply this all over the model. All the armor will be covered in this. After that is done, we then take Iron Breaker and we do a light dry brush all over the metal. We will then do a second coat of the Abaddon Black and Nuln Oil Wash again. And once that is done, we're going to do a fine highlight again with the Iron Breaker. We're going to focus mostly on just the edges of the armor. And now with Steel Legion Drab, Bane Blade Brown, and Rakarth Flesh, we're going to paint the cloak. We're going to start off with a full layer of Steel Legion Drab. Now, a quick note overall, when painting these models, you kind of want to plan out your paint scheme so you don't have to keep going back to the same colors and stuff. I'm painting the cloak first is because after the armor, it is the next, like, layer. Over this, there's going to be gear, uh, jewelry, a belt, and stuff like that, so plan accordingly. And once that is done, we're going to take a one-to-one -one mix of Steel Legion Drab and Bane Blade Brown, and we're going to paint the robes again. But this time, we're going to cover like 90 to 95 percent of it. Only the deepest, darkest regions will be Steel Legion Drab. And once that is done, we're going to go with straight Bane Blade Brown, and then we are going to paint around 70 to 80 percent of the cloak. Then with a two parts Bane Blade Brown and one part Rackhearth Flesh, we will then begin highlighting. Now we're only going to do this on the edges of the cloak, the raised areas, the creases, maybe 50% or less, 40-50% to of the model, or the cloak will have this. And 
then with one to one Bane Blade Brown and Rakarth Flesh, we highlight the fine edges and the raised areas. Make sure you have a good brush for this. And now with Rhinox Hide, we're just going to paint the leather belt that hangs up his cloak. And now with Mornfang Brown, XV88, and Agrax Earthshade, we're going to paint his gun holster. Now we're going to start off by covering an entire layer of Mornfang Brown. Afterwards, we're going to give it a thin layer of Agrax Earthshade. We're not going to have it pool, we're just going to coat it in it. We're then going to go back with Mornfang Brown, and we're going to paint like 90-95% to 95 of the entire thing Mornfang Brown. We then give it a second coat of Agrax Earthshade all over. We don't want it to pull, we just want to darken it. And then we're going to go back with Mornfang Brown again, and we're going to do the edges, and we're going to do the main body. Now, when doing the main body, we're going to do like these little fluttery ups and downs. Uh, this looks good from a distance, like this feathering pattern on the raised areas and such, because it'll look better for a transition. Straight hard lines is going to look kind of jarring. And now with a one-to-one -one mix of XV88 and Mornfang Brown, we're going to highlight all the fine edges, and then we're going to do a thin fluttery line through the main body. Make sure you have the right brush for this, but then we're going to take pure XV88 and apply it to the highest areas, little dips. We're going to just do little tap tap taps. We don't want too much, we don't want it to overpower, we just want it to be somewhat noticed. And now to protect all the work we did, we're going to take the Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte Varnish and AK Interactive Ultra Matte, and we're going to apply it as such. We're going to apply the Ultra Matte all over the cloak. This will make every brush stroke uh, stand out more and make it look clothy or leathery. And then once that is done, we're going to take the Ultra Matte and we're going to apply it all over his gun holster. This has a very unique thing, like if you've seen like a hard leather itself, it somewhat has a shine sometimes, and this uh, matte is going to protect it. The Army Painter Matte is going to give it nice shine, as well as we're going to apply it on major parts of the armor that we would grab, you know, the armor is done, might as well varnish it here so we don't waste any varnish. And now with Fenrisian Grey, Abaddon Black, and Pallid Witch Flesh, because I am sick and tired of White Scar White, it is terrible, we're going to paint the shoulder pads and iconography. We're going to start with a base layer of Fenrisian Grey. Now I'm only using this because I don't have Ulthwan Grey, which is the real one you should be using, but this is a close substitute. And with a 0.25mm micro pen, I'm going to sketch out the basic outline of the cross on there, the Templar cross. And then we will then fill that in with Abaddon Black and draw lines. Now this is a bit of a process back and forth of Abaddon Black and then cleaning it up with Fenrisian Grey, so back and forth, this takes a while, but I'll save you that. And after an ungodly amount of time, here's the result. And then with Pallid Witch Flesh, we cover all the Fenrisian Grey. And now with Doombull Brown and Dawnstone, we're going to take the Doombull Brown and we're going to paint the, like, earth part of his base. And once that's done, we're going to take the Dawnstone and just paint the rock part of his base. 
And then with Vallejo Pigments Dark Slate Gray and AK Interact Ultra Matte Varnish, we're going to apply a pigment powder to it. Now, I can skip the water part and just add Ultra Matte directly onto the pigment, and then it'll solidify and be like a mix that I can just spread everywhere and it'll be fine. The only problem is, though, I kind of added too many Dark Slate Gray pigment, and it kind of coated the entire thing a little too much, so that's kind of an accident and a flaw, and you can't really see anything underneath. I then take a large brush and try to scrape off as much as I can, but the, uh, the AK Interactive stuff worked well, so this is solid. Uh, so the base is a little bit flat and monotone, but well, we'll live with it. While we're at it, we will then edge the base with Mornfang Brown, two coat. And now we will attach the character to the base. We will use super glue. Make sure you do a dry run first. I had to cut off uh, most of the little pole that sticks out of his feet in order for him to attach because the paint caked on and made it too. All right, with Cadian Flesh Tone, Skeleton Horde Contrast, and Kislev Flesh, we will paint the face. We're going to start off with a base layer of Cadian Flesh Tone. We'll probably do two coats simply so that uh, we don't see anything else other than the Cadian Flesh Tone. We then apply a watered down skeleton horde contrast, like one to one water. We then, with a very good brush, a fine brush, we coat basically 95 to 99% of the entire model's head with Cadian flesh tone again. Only the deepest, darkest recesses and the edges of where his flesh meets, like something else, will be, uh, will show skeleton horde contrast. And with one-to-one -one, uh, Kislev Flesh and Cadian Flesh shown, we will then highlight all of the raised areas, like his eyebrows, nose, high cheekbones, and other stuff we're going to outline. Like, I'd say 80-90% to 90 of the head is going to be covered in this, and the top of the head, the giant portions of skin, do a up and down fluttering. Uh, it'll make transitions between the colors look better with this than just hard lines. Only apply the hard lines like on the crest of his skull, I don't know how to describe it. And then with pure Kislev, we're going to place it on the hi highest, most raised areas and such, the crest of his skull, and remember we're going to do like a fluttering like technique with our brush on the top parts of his head and stuff to help with like the transition of color. And once that is done, we're going to apply AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish onto his face to seal it in just in case, and also it really brings out like all the brush strokes and stuff on his face and gives his face a distinct look. And now with Vallejo Liquid Copper, Liquid Old Gold, Liquid Gold, and Liquid Silver, we're going to paint his special metallics. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to paint his shoulder pads, his jewelry, and parts of his shield first with the Liquid Copper. We're not going to do his chest piece or his backpack yet, because we want to glue those in afterwards. If we glue them now, it's going to get in the way of painting. And with some Iron Breaker, because I completely forgot about this step, we're going to go and we're going to paint all the silver on the uh, model. All the silver pieces, the chains, uh, parts of the backpack and other stuff, his belt buckle and such and such, needs to be Iron Breaker first. Alright, and now with Vallejo Old Gold, we will now cover a majority of the shoulder pads. Uh, we will begin to highlight all the jewelry and parts of the shield. We only want the uh, liquid copper to show through in the deep recesses and in the like right angles of the jewelry. Now we're going to attach the backpack to the body. And the gold is always a bit sticky for a while, and since we're painting this essentially in a rush, 
uh, we won't have time for it to fully like cure so if we did this beforehand we would end up ruining uh, the paint and stuff with touching it and now with old gold I paint the whatever this is this iron halo and then his chest piece with it and then I paint the little uh, skull and symbol on the backpack with it And now with regular gold, well, Vallejo liquid gold gold, now with the regular gold, we then use this and we're going to highlight, we're going to apply this to like 40 to 50% of the gold pieces, the upper raised areas, the edges, not the fine edges, but like a basic edge on all this stuff, as well as his chest piece is going to, like we're going to do over brushing, we don't want it to be runny, but we just want enough that can get off the brush onto his chest piece eagle so that the edges of it will have a nice brighter gold on it. And then with Vallejo Silver, we are going to apply it on the very fine edges. We don't, we basically want to add almost none. Like the edges of the shield, the edges of the wings on his chest, the tips of his iron halo, and like little taps of it on all of his jewelry, shoulder piece, and such and such. We want it to be like barely visible, barely there, but it will be noticeable. And now, with Corn Red, Mephiston Red, and Evil Sun Scarlet, we will now be doing the red parts of the Purity Seals. And we start off with Corn Red as the base. Make sure you do the center and the ring's edges. Now, however, after starting this, I realize I probably should have done this after the paper and the bones were done, because they're very close, so it's going to cause a little difficulty when painting later. But what can you do? And then once that's done, we're going to go with Pure Mephiston Red, and we're going to paint the edges of the rings and the centers. And once that's done, we're going to take Evil Sun Scarlet and we're going to put a drop of it in the center of each purity seal and then the upper like 60% of the ring. And now with Steel Legion Drab, Bane Blade Brown, Rakar's Flesh, Earth, Agrax Earthshade, and Nuln Oil, we're going to be painting purity seals and skeletons. And we're going to start off by painting all the purity seals and the skeleton Steel Legion Drab. Then we will take a one-to-one -one mix of Steel Legion Drab and Bane Blade Brown and then apply it to all of the skeleton and his parts right here, including the purity seals. We then use pure Bane Blade Brown on the raised areas of the skeleton and the edges and creases of the purity seals. And now with two parts Bane Blade Brown and one part Ratkarth Flesh, we will highlight all the edges and the edges and creases of the purity seals. Now part of the uh, big flat parts or stuff, uh, basically for the skeleton use hard lines for the highlighting. For the papery stuff, the big paper that's on the shield, use little fluttery strokes up and down. Now to make the purity seals and the skeleton look different, we're going to apply Nuln Oil onto the skeleton itself. And once that is done, we're going to take Agrax Earthshade and apply that all over the purity seals and the paper.
And going back to the Baneblade Brown and Rackarth Flesh mix, two parts Baneblade and one part Rackarth, we're going to do another edging on the edges of the purity seals and none of the bones. We want them to look different. And once all the purity seals are done, we're going to take a very fine brush and some Abaddon Black and we're going to paint squiggles all over the purity seal. And now with some Doombull Brown and Nuln Oil, we're going to paint the handle of his sword. We're going to start with a base layer of Doombull Brown. And once that is done, we're going to coat it in Nuln Oil to darken it. And then once that's done, we're going to go with Doombull Brown again, and we're going to highlight the upper 60%-ish of each of the rings. His handle has, like, rings. Now going back to Ironbreaker, there are several metal pieces on the skeleton as well as a chain he's holding and the hourglass he has. I'm going to paint them all Ironbreaker. And now with the Fang, Hoeth Blue, Lamian Medium, Fenrisian Grey, and White Scar, we are going to try to paint like a glowing effect on his sword. We're going to start off with a Two to one mix, two parts Lamian medium and one part the Fang, and we're going to use this as a base coat layer on his sword and the little wire that comes out of it. We're going to paint like a serpentine pattern and we're going to cake up several layers of this. This is very thin, so we apply and apply and apply until it's well invisible and like floaty, ethereal, like smoke, kind of. That's what I'm going to try to do. And then with Hoeth Blue, with a one part Hoeth Blue and two parts Lamian Medium, I'm going to fill in the fluttery ghost twisty thingy that I painted beforehand. And now with Fenrisian Grey, with one part Fenrisian Grey and two parts Lamian Medium, we're going to fill in, or like little taps here and there, like gentle taps, we're going to fill in uh, parts of the thinner area. And then with some watered down white scar, we're gonna apply little tap tap taps here and there over the, like, inside the little power fields we've created. Less is more. And then with some iron breaker, we're going to clean up some of the fluffiness of this. Add some sharper lines in some areas and break hard lines in other areas. Use your own discretion on this. And then with a layer of the army painter anti-shine ultra matte we're going to apply it all over the sword it's going to have a metallic shine on it and it's going to seal it in pretty well all right with snarsnick green lauren forest mephiston red evil sun scarlet hoeth blue and fenrisian gray we're going to paint the was it the his heraldry first we give the shield a base coat of abaddon black all over even the sides start off with a base layer of lauren forest for one we're going to do a pattern with this then with Hoeth Blue, we're going to paint little squares into the black. Then with Mephiston Red, we're going to paint a nice stripe through both of them. Now with a one-to-one -one mix of Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet, maybe a bit more Mephiston Red, we're going to highlight this stripe. We're going to paint the edges this, and we're going to paint like the upper half of this thing with this color. And then with a one-to-one -one mix of Snarsnick Green and Lauren Forest, we then paint the edges and then fill in a little bit of the upper half of the green part of the shield. And then with a 50-50 of Fenrisian Grey and Hoeth Blue, we then highlight the, cir or the squares made. Alright then, with Nuln Oil, Skeleton Horde Contrast, and Gulliman Flesh, we're going to paint the exhaust ports and such, as well as the uh, Necron Warrior on his base. We apply Nuln Oil first for shadow. We then apply Skeleton Horde Contrast all over the exhaust port parts of the backpack, as well as all the plates, not joints, of the Necron Warrior. We then use Gulliman Flesh to fill in the plates, or part of the plates, like 70-80% of the plates of the Necron Warrior, and also to fill in the holes of his backpack.
And then with Iron Breaker, we highlight parts of the Necron Warrior that have been like cut off, ripped apart. And I forgot to do it earlier, but then I apply AK Interactive Ultra Mad Varnish over the skeletons and the purity seals. And then with Dawnstone, I'm going to paint the entirety of the hourglass part, or the glass of the hourglass, and then I will add Nuln Oil in it to add some shadow. And I don't show it on camera, but then I just apply a little bit more of the Dawnstone on it. And done and done. Well, this is the culmination of everything I learned from painting the Indominus box set. Alright, I am going to... Well, let's think of the positives and negatives. The positives, first off, I finally got a lot of creamy gold from the Vallejo set. I finally got that down of how to constantly add alcohol into the mix and how to keep it looking good so it doesn't clump. The cloak looks very good. The jewelry looks very good. The shield looks very good. The skeleton and the... Purity seals look very good. The scribbles are a little bit new. I haven't done it that much, and on some of them, they're a little thicker than they should be. Or basically, like whoever wrote the purity seal was on caps lock. Now, the face looks great. I gave him two service studs, one gold and one silver, which I figure he'd have to be pretty old to be a captain, so I'm putting him at 101 years of service minimum. The heraldic shield on him has a lot more detail, is a lot more complex and has more color into it. There are highlights on all the little squares and stuff. That's pretty good. The base was pretty simple. The sword, I'm still working on that, but <coughs> that's not too bad. All right, I'm gonna give it, it's not a 10. It's not a nine, it is an eight. I'm giving myself an eight out of 10. I did very good on everything. The only things that hold it back is the base that I made I kind of screwed up a bit so it doesn't look as good as the other ones, like color-wise. Uh, you can't see the paint underneath the rocks, I've added too much pigment. As well as the sword, I'm still getting used to that. And the purity seals are a little bit too thick. Now, I, there are a few things I could have done that could have got it to a 9, but I haven't practiced them in so many years that I wasn't going to try it. Like on the shield, there are these huge like purity seal sections and I could uh, scribe a name onto it, but I haven't done that in so long, I wasn't going to try now on something so important. But if I was able to get add some more details on the shield, uh, where there clearly could have been names inscribed, and if I could have gotten the power sword better, uh, that could have easily jumped it, oh, and the base being better, uh, with like the colors and stuff, and not overly pigmented, it could have easily have been a 9. But, yeah, some mistakes, and it's an 8. Now, as for uh, the notice I gave at the beginning about the Necron box. So here's the thing about the Necron box. It's kind of boring. It's really boring. In fact, I took a look at the Necrons and then from a distance, <coughs> I could, like they all look the same. Painting scheme wise, a, a uniform army, they would all kind of look the same. In fact, I can divide the entire Necron box set into two groups. Guys with shiny swords and gold, and guys who don't have shiny swords and gold. As such, uh, it'll take a little while, but my next Necron, uh, the next video to come out will focus on the Necron, on every Necron that does not have a shiny sword. So my next video to come out will be every single Necron that does not have a shiny sword. So I'm gonna lump them all together. That's the warriors, the scorpions, that big walker thingy, and the other things that I can't really name, but they're Necron-like, because they all pretty much look the same. So, not much variation there. All right, so like the video if you like the video. Uh, share if you want to share it. Comment if you want to comment. Like is over there, dislike is over there. And I'll see you eh, a little later than last time, but I'll see you again soon.